The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like bundling your cardboard separately. These bundles can act as a lid for your blue box or placing heavier items such as magazines on top of papers with no material above the rim. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk Politics. I'm Deborah Hutchison in the Rogers TV studio. Our guest this week is Scugog Mayor Bobby Drew. We'd like to welcome Mayor Drew back to the show, who is joining us via Zoom. How are you? I am fine and working out of the office today, which uh, I guess our last few conversations have uh, been from my home. So uh, working out of the office today and uh, happy to be back, uh, even part time in the office. So that's great. Nice to talk to you again. Good to see you. Uh, lots to talk about. Let's start, of course, with um, the recent COVID relief funding from the federal and provincial governments. How much was Scugog's share? Well, uh, we were very, very grateful to receive $528,900. And, uh, and that will help uh, cover the expenses that we had at, uh, at that point. And, and, uh, and the loss of uh, significant loss of revenue. So uh, yeah, we we're very grateful to, to get that. Is it enough? How, how will it help? How close will it be to um, filling the gap? Well, at the point of time when, when we received it, um, it did help to pay for the expenses. Um, you know, the, the personal protective equipment, uh, the signage, the additional washrooms and uh, the, you know, the cancellation of the recreation programs was a, a significant loss of, of revenue for us um, and loss of investment uh, income um, because of uh, the lower interest rates. And so it, it really, uh, it really did help. Um, and, uh, and we look forward to uh, considering uh, some of the um, uh, projects that we had to put aside um, just to delay uh, to make a um, an assessment later, uh, it, it gives us an opportunity now to look at those uh, services and uh, capital projects that uh, we had to put aside. So it's all it's all good news, and uh, we'll hope for more of that going forward because it is imperative for these uh, small municipalities, in particular, to uh, be compensated for the loss of revenue and uh, the additional expenses. You mentioned projects that you had to put on hold or put aside. What were some of those projects? Uh, well, there was some uh, some of the capital projects, uh, roads uh, that hadn't been tendered yet, um, and uh, you know some of the other services. Um, we had to even consider um, you know the the openings um, and and how we were going to be able to manage that. So uh, yeah, we, we, we did put a number of things aside. So um, hopefully we'll be able to resurrect them. Uh, is it enough? I know a lot of municipalities have talked about, you know, this is the phase one funding. Are you hoping for more? Um, yes, of, of course, because uh, additional expenses are continuing as we uh, continue to open for phase three. And, uh, and uh, so there's significant loss of revenue as well because uh, phase three opening um, is, is going to be delayed, but also um, there have to be extra measures in place uh, to reopen. So uh, yeah, we, we will need more as we go along and uh, we're really, really hopeful that, uh, that we get that so that we can provide the services and uh, do the projects uh, that are so much needed in our municipality. You know, I've, I've spoken with many mayors uh, about the economic impact uh, of COVID on their, um, you know, the municipal coffers. Um, are you still looking at a potential deficit? Are, uh, is a tax increase inevitable? Uh, no, we're not looking at, at a deficit. Um, um, immediately when uh, the state of emergency was announced, uh, we took measures to, uh, first of all, track our, our expenses, um, and, but have a look at um, how we could save money and, and how we could keep people working, um, provide all the services uh, that, that we can, and we did. 
Um, so we redeployed um, staff from uh, recreation um, and parks. We re redeployed staff to recreation and parks. Uh, we delayed hiring um, some vacant positions. Um, be, by going to uh, redeploying, we did not need to have uh, seasonal positions in parks. Uh, so that uh, helped uh, offset the costs of, uh, of the whole situation. Um, and uh, so we were, we were uh, very, very quick to react um, and, and track those expenses and make those changes so that there was uh, the least uh, impact on the municipality as, as we could make it. Uh, so of course we're now in, in stage three. Um, openings continue very uh, slowly. The Scugog Community Recreation Center, um, we recently, uh, recently announced details on um, its opening. Let's, let's talk a bit about that and how that is gonna work. Yes, uh, well, the, the Scugog uh, Community Recreation Center, um, once we entered into phase three, uh, open for day camps um, and uh, with strict controls um, and spacing. Um, and it was an emergency cooling se center and, uh, and we did open it for special use for the blood donor clinic. So uh, come the middle of September, we're going to be putting the ice in and uh, it will be that the two pads will be available. Uh, for for skating for um, uh, for hockey and and so on, um, there's numerous safety precautions in place. Um, we've uh, we've worked all that through with the regulations and the uh, the emergency measures that uh, we have to keep in place, and uh, we've worked with our uh, our teams, our user groups. Uh, so we we hope to we hope to open um, on September the fifteenth um, for this uh, for this activity. And um, in the 21st, there's a number of other uh, things that are be going to be opening. Uh, the recreation center will be open for uh, pickleball, um, again, with restrictions. Um, the uh, Outlook, which is, um, sorry, Lookout, uh, which is the, um, uh, the youth center at the Scugog Recreation Center, uh, that will be open. Um, masks have to be worn and a maximum of 10 people. Uh, in there, so um, that's quite exciting. Um, and then uh, come uh, October, we'll be looking at uh, the demand for ice time and whether we can open the Blackstock uh, Recreation Center for, for hockey and activities. So, um, and then our, 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 our um, uh, halls will be opening um, as well, again, with uh, strict regulations that have to be followed. And as a matter of fact, all user groups and teams have to abide by um, all of the rules and regulations and they have to provide us their plans um, as well as their plans. Uh, different organizations like hockey have um, developed plans uh, from their associations. So we're putting all that together and make sure that whatever we do, whatever openings we have is gonna be done safely. And of course, your updates uh, are available to look at any time online, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. I urge everyone to check our, uh, our website um, to get the most up-to-date information. Of course, though, one of the casualties of COVID, another casualty has been the Scugog Sports Hall of Fame ceremony for 2020. Yes, yes, uh, we just uh, had it announced that um, that, that will be canceled for 2020. Um, we look forward to um, an exciting and bigger and better uh, next year. Um, so far, that's, uh, that's in the offing. So uh, that will be great. Um, yes, but it is a, a huge disappointment, but we have to make those decisions um, with enough time for people to uh, make, their, make their plans. So people come from quite a distance sometimes. And so plans uh, may have been started or uh, hopefully we, we canceled it before um, anything major in the, in the way of planning has been done. So, I wanna ask you about your, how busy your bylaw officers have been um, responding to uh, complaints of overcrowding or people not following the rules. How busy have they been? Or are people, are they getting with the program and are they following the rules? Well, at first they were very busy because the restrictions were so tight and people 
um, were not always as aware as, as they could have been. And uh, so they were very, very busy, especially in stage one. And then people started getting the message. Um, as you know, we're, we're a, a tourist destination. And uh, although the message has been getting out very clearly from Scugog Township uh, with our, our communications department, um, you know, that's maybe not reaching uh, some of our tourists. So they were getting the message. And uh, so as time went on, um, it was a little less stressful for our bylaw officers, but they worked very, very hard and uh, they were so pleasant to people. And um, for the most part, uh, most people were, were very pleasant and apologetic that they had maybe broken the rules or were bending them, certainly. Um, and, uh, and we took measures on our, uh, the piers and the, uh, uh, all the waterfront there to make sure that uh, people were safe, including our boaters and our swimmers. Um, because, uh, you know, the, the fishermen were getting a little too close to the boat launches. And uh, so we, we took measures to make that safer as well. Yeah, you know, you mentioned you are a tourist destination. And when people are, I guess, trying to get some, I guess, relief from all this confinement, um, you know, they're, they're going to go to the water. They're going to go to your waterfront. They're going to go to the pier. They're go you're right. They're going to fish. Um, and... You know, you're, you are a beacon for people from all over. Yes. Yes, we're, we're a destination. Um, and uh, it, it, has, it has caused us some problems. Um, but, you know, uh, it seems sometimes in our parks, especially the waterfront parks, um, that they were really, really crowded, um, even lately. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the crowds, you realize that um, they are in small groups, probably family groups or their own bubbles. Um, so you have to take that into context as well. Uh, I know people get a little panicky when they see lots of people in the park. Um, but, um, you know, I, I've noticed that myself, that it is small groups um, and probably families. Just multiple small groups. Yes. Uh, of <laughs> families or, or people in the bubble. We've only got about a minute before we have to go to break. But I want to start the conversation on, um, on, on your business and your downtown and how are they rebounding um yes it, some um merchants have uh, have taken the challenge and turned it into an opportunity they've been very resourceful in um using social media um having um uh, front door pickups uh, deliveries takeout uh for the restaurants uh so uh you know, it depends on the type of business now apparently I, i'm hearing that uh, pizza places are doing very well mm -hmm. and and that stands to reason because people are staying at home and they're vacationing at home so uh they're doing very well and uh some of our restaurants i guess most of our restaurants have um really been resourceful in uh in their patios um in their takeout um so they're i think they're paying the bills i i would say okay i'm going to uh, stop you there we have to go to a quick break uh, okay. We'll continue our conversation with Scugog Mayor Bobby Drew after this. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like crushing your cans and bottles down in your container's blue box and your box board down in your paper's box. This saves a lot of space and reduces the possibility of material blowing out of your blue box on windy days. Family, it's just extremely important. People move around, connected for success. It's just made it so much easier. For the longest time, I was on cloud nine to connect you to family. It connects you to the outside world and it makes you feel connected to the community. It was a whole new experience. You realize then how much you missed out. In fact, connect is my favorite word now. I love that word. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> As a senior support coordinator at Durham Regional Police, I have the privilege of working with seniors and the organizations that serve them. Join me, Sergeant Deborah Anderton, along with Constable Daryl Rice on Seniors Talk, as we put the spotlight on the issues that matter most to seniors and their families. Safety, wellness, and family responsibilities are just some of the challenges that we'll tackle on Seniors Talk, only on Rogers TV. 
Did you miss us? We sure missed you here at the Knights of Columbus. Our TV bingo is starting back up again, Tuesday, September 8th at 7 p.m. for your chance to win $5,000 and get rid of those COVID blues right here on Rogers TV. We are back on Talk Politics. Our guest this week is Scugog Mayor Bobby Drew, who joins us via Zoom. W Mayor Drew, when we went, uh, we're going to break, we were talking about businesses and how they are rebounding. And you said, you know, for the most part, um, the restaurants, pizza places, um, they've at least been able to pay the bills. Um, but that probably hasn't been the case for every business. Yes, that, that's true. Um, uh, some of it, like our, our um donut shops and all of that, they're, they're probably doing well. Um, our bakery um, has, uh, they've always got lineups outside. Um, uh, the butcher on Queen Street in Port Perry um, uh, has always got a lineup outside. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they're paying the bills. Now, other stores that uh, depend on people dropping in and browsing, mm. uh, you know, they're suffering. Um, I would say, um, and uh, you know, you, you can shop online. Some of the some of the stores have shopping online, and as time goes on, uh, they're getting more and more innovative and res innovative and resourceful um, about how to improve business under these conditions. So, the, and the important thing is is for us to shop local. Everything you need can be found in Scugog Township. I'm convinced, uh, because I certainly haven't been shopping anywhere else um, in six months. So, um, and I'm not doing without. So, um, you know, we can get anything we want in, in Scugog Township and I encourage everyone to continue to shop locally. Um, it is so important to our businesses. And, you know, if we have a dead main street um, or main streets in any of our hamlets, um, it's, it's not good for the sustainability of Scugog Township. So it's important, very important. So is that the main point uh, as to what must happen for your community to rebound? Is people just staying there and shopping local? I, I, I'm convinced of that, yes. Uh, any word on, on bi businesses that you've lost? I mean, we hear every day that, I know in Toronto, these, these cornerstones of business are just saying goodbye. Has that been the case uh, of any business in Scugog? There was one business that, that closed, but they retired. Um, we've had new businesses open. Um, a cheese shop, um, a, um, a furniture store is ready to open. A uh, men's store um, is newly opened, um, all during the pandemic. Um, so at this point, there's one, um, there's one store that is... Um, uh, going out of business, I'm not sure if it's because of COVID, um, but I know that there is um, a similar uh, business, almost exactly the same, going into the same spot. So, and that's a, a, a huge piece of real estate. So uh, that's good news. So, no, I, I, I haven't heard of, um, of any, I can't none come to mind right now, which is really, really good news because I, I have, um, now that things have opened up a little bit, I have uh, gone out of town, um, just mooching around looking. Um, and uh, that's not the case for other areas. And, uh, and that's very sad. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's move on with some other, uh, some other items here. Um, Durham is calling for water restrictions um, as they work on the Port Perry uh, water tower. That's correct. Um, yes, we're asking everybody to just be uh, careful with their water use. And that is between September the 4th and the 28th. So they're doing some um, some work on the on the standpipe uh, just west of um, Port Perry High School, and uh, so restrictions are necessary. So uh, just please just be very careful. And uh, thankfully, we've had a little bit of rain, and uh, hopefully, people will stop watering their lawns um, as we enter into the fall season. And um, you know, just uh, just be careful. Shorten those showers and so on. Make oh. sure your uh, laundry tub is, uh, your, your washing machine is full it before is you full. operate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> there, now, when we talk about the Scugog waterfront, of course, um, algae is inevitable as the summer, uh, you know, um, draws out. 
but there's been some green blue algae reported. Yes, um, that's a naturally occurring um, uh, toxic um, item that that uh, we, we see nearly every year um, and, and more so with these hot summers. So uh, yeah, our, our Kinsman Beach is closed. The rest of the lake is safe. Um, just be aware that um, it do not play or ingest or don't have your, your, your pets go into any water that is discolored. If there's any foam, scum or mats of algae, um, make sure you stay away from that. Don't eat fish, don't fish there. Uh, but it, it's basically contained to uh, Kinsman Beach and it will be closed for the rest of the summer. So yes, the rest of the lake is safe and open and I encourage everyone to continue with their boating and their swimming um, and using the marina and the boat launches and uh, the piers, um, everything is safe other than that Kinsman Beach. Well, and let's hope that uh, we've had such a hot summer and it's been uh, weather-wise such a great summer. Um, let's yeah. hope that continues into the fall so that people yes. can continue to I guess, make use of Lake Scugog. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, let's also talk about your 2020 Scugog Youth Initiatives. Um, your submission date has been extended. Uh, explain who this initiative is for and what it's all about. Well, we have the, um, the four Scugog Charity Golf Tournament every year. Now we've had to cancel it this year um, for obvious reasons. Um, and we did that early in the, in the spring. Um, for obvious reasons. So uh, yeah, we didn't want to um, impose on our businesses for um, sponsorships and, and so on. However, um, we, do have, uh, we do have some money. We always keep some back to start out the next, uh, the next tournament um, and, uh, and for situations like this. But uh, so it's uh, recognized youth groups within the, uh, within the township that um, are the beneficiaries of, uh, of this money and they apply. And it's like our local, local state skating clubs and uh, hockey, minor ball, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Precious Minds. Um, the Green Bank Puppeteers uh, were the recipients. And, and so it just uh, helps them along and, um, and they apply every year and uh, we're, we're happy to do it. As a matter of fact, since 2004, uh, we have um, given out one hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. We've we've raised for that's incredible initiatives. Yes, youth initiatives. So uh, the submission date has been extended till when? Um, oh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, I'm sorry, I'll have to I'll have to look that one up. But uh, okay, you know what? All this information is online. It Everybody is. can yeah. check it out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's talk also talk about the regional cycling uh, plan. Uh, there were a couple of uh, opportunities for residents up in Scugog to have their say. Um, what is the region looking at in regards to a, a cycling plan? Uh, well, they're looking at a transportation master plan right now, and uh, we are ready to um, present the active transportation plan and transportation master plan for Scugog uh, this fall. Um, and uh, we're going to align those two together and, uh, um, and, and come up with uh, a plan that uh, will provide for a progressive transportation system um, and, and enhancing the mobility in the township of Scugog through active transportation and, uh, and ensuring that there is safe and efficient and sustainable movement of people and goods uh, and the farmer's goods uh, to the plan is uh, extended to 2031 and beyond. So uh, we're going to meld those two together. Um, and uh, that was really uh, beneficial to, to do that. It's, it's always beneficial to work together so you don't have to uh, do things twice. So um, yes, that's quite exciting. And um, we'll look forward to seeing this unfold. Uh, I guess, and I also want to ask you about, um, you had a, a pedestrian pilot project for your downtown area that ha has come to an end. Um, so basically for a while there, there was no motor vehicle traffic you had. It was for pedestrians only. How did that work out? Well, from uh, the, the, the purpose of this whole project uh, was to um, allow for safe uh, physical distancing. 
um, as we said before, we are a tourist destination and uh, weekends are particularly busy. And uh, the sidewalks were, it was impossible um, on the weekends to, um, to physically distance mm -hmm. it. So people were walking out on the road sometime to, uh, to avoid other people. So um, we developed this plan um, with the BIA um, and uh, the BIA finalized uh, and made their decision to, to go ahead with it or their blessing to go ahead with it in uh, mid-July. So uh, we worked quickly to get things in place and we opened up uh, the 24th uh, July weekend, and uh, which happened to be my birthday, as a matter of fact. Oh, and happy belated birthday. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So uh, anyway, it was very successful. Um, a survey that was conducted um, uh, indicated that uh, people felt safe and comfortable walking downtown. So from that perspective, it was very successful. Um, we were encouraging uh, the BIA, the, the merchants on Queen Street to open earlier in conjunction with the um, uh, with the farmer's market that opened at eight o'clock. Uh, we encouraged them to do that. Some did. Um, and uh, not at eight o'clock, but some did open earlier, and um, and we encouraged them to beautify their uh, their premises and uh, put tables out with their wares. Um, and uh, so, from that perspective of of physical distancing, it was very successful. Um, the BIA had uh, they they initially agreed to four weeks, and the BIA had uh, a, a meeting and uh, they had their own survey um, and some merchants felt that um, that they lost business throughout this process. Uh, some felt that they did not, uh, some gained business um, and and some were uh, did did not have an opinion on on how whether they business improved or not. Um, the long and the short of it is they decided, uh, the BIA decided that they did not uh, wish to continue the project for the rest of the summer. So that gives us an opportunity to compare the last few weekends of the summer um, to the four weekends that, uh, that we had uh, closed to, to traffic and open only to pedestrians. Um, so it was, it was called an open streets project and, uh, we learned a lot, uh, from the, the pilot and, um, uh, we'll have more input from the BIA and hopefully sometime in the future, we will revisit this and, uh, make some improvements. If we'd had more time, we could have beautified it a lot more It um, you know, with the, the fencing that we, that we had to use, um, it wasn't as attractive as it could have been. Um, but as I say, with more time and more planning, um, hopefully we can revisit this sometime in the future because okay. it was very popular. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there. We are out of time. Skugog Mayor Bobby Drew, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks to you, our viewers. Until next time, I'm Deborah Hutchison. Stay safe, everyone. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. For Sir George Etienne Cartier, the work of uniting Canada was as vast as the country itself. First, he won over Quebec. Union is the only way for work. No, Monsieur Cartier. Confederation will cost French Canadians their nationality. Monsieur, together we will form a political nationality independent of our origins. Diversity will be Canada's strength. Then he fought for Manitoba. The Northwest has formed a government under Louis Riel. We will not join Confederation unless our rights are respected. So you want a new province? Then you'll have it. That will be a place for your people in Canada. He envisioned a country from Atlantic to Pacific. British Columbia won't even think of joining Canada without a wagon road through the Rockies. Ask for a railway. We are building a country after all. Bold as a lion, Confederation could not have happened but for him. Du Canada, son pays, ses amours.